In a diversified and complex market like Asia-Pacific, developing and implementing your fleet strategy could be a challenge. Learn from Nashiket Anavekar, Global Head Facilities, Real Estate and Administration at Tata Technologies, how to successfully overcome obstacles across Asia-Pacific. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all my viewers who have taken the time to tune in and hear me today. Before I start, I hope you and your loved ones have been taking good care of yourselves and safe out there. We are all in this together and I'm confident that we will come out much stronger. Thank you, Stephen and his team for bringing the fleet community together through this Global Fleet Conference 2021. This is something that was missing until last year. And I'm happy that in APAC, we are progressing well to create that safety net for our fellow fleet managers. I'm Nachiket and head the global facilities, real estate and operations for Tata Technologies. Our vision is to engineer a better world and mission is to help the world drive, fly, build and farm by enabling out our clients to realize a bet better product. This ties back in the fleet strategy as well. And this is what I'll be talking to you through today. This is the agenda. So let's get started without any further ado. The building blocks for the fleet strategy, what are they? The heart of everything, we need customer centricity, else every, every operations will be shaky, even if you get everything right. And it starts with health, safety, and environment. Selection for a fit for purpose, safe vehicle, is the only priority for any fleet manager. We also need to consider fuel efficient or EVs or the hybrid options that are carbon neutral. Then comes the supply chain. You may have the best option, but long delivery times may need importing. Service networks may be available or may not be available in tier two, three cities. Your partnership with these OEM and leasing companies is the key. Then you have technology. Leverage technology to your advantage. Dump those Excel sheets and deploy efficient fleet management software who does all the hard work for you. Then you have the life cycle management. From onboarding to maintenance to retiring of your fleet should be seamless activity because you touch upon a lot of departments right from finance, HR, procurement. Refreshing of fleet should be planned much ahead of time and consider external factors like COVID, change in government reg regulatory approvals, norms should also be factored in. Then we have innovation. Be ahead of the game. Innovate to raise the bar of your fleet. How do you optimize routes? Reduce your downtime of a fleet. It's innovation. And finally, TCO. Finally, get your numbers right. And I'm talking about TCO on my next slide in detail. So just to sum it up, these are your building blocks of your fleet strategy. But if you notice, customer centricity is the key. Now, let's move on to the next slide. TCO, control and supplier harmonization. What's TCO? TCO is always looked upon as total lease rental into the number of months of a lease. But on the contrary, it's much more than that. And as fleet managers, I urge each one of you to drive that message back home to your CFOs and your procurement co colleagues. I would say TCO is the acquisition lease cost plus fuel efficiency, operation cost, maintenance, plus leasing and vehicle administration, and the rest you will value. But we would fail in a TCO if we had not considered customer experience. A TCO, TCO could be the best, 
but what about customer experience have you considered that this goes back to my building blocks where you do everything and should be done keeping the end user at the heart of it else your tco will be skewed supply your harmonization is apac ready my simple question would be is apac ready for your supplier harmonization in some countries yes but the larger part of apac no simply because the geography needs are so diverse developing markets have to still import vehicles and fleet managers need to have a healthy partnership with multiple partners to keep the show running they cannot afford to keep all their eggs in a single basket be it leasing or oem partners supplier harmonization is just not supplier consolidation or having one global supplier across the countries cause it will fail and i'm saying this with personal experience it's good to have a global framework but we need to tweak it to your countries and regions like i said during the fleet summit apac 2021 think global act local will make you successful we should be working towards a supplier harmonization in future absolutely yes and jointly create that ecosystem for everyone every organizations have different needs and so are the asks but with a clear vision and right partnership and understanding the nuances you can deliver it let's move on to the next slide kpi and partner reviews if you can't measure it you can't manage it is one of my favorite mantra and fleet management is no different we don't need any fancy colorful dashboards with numbers thrown around or a heavy powerpoint presentation what we need performance indicators that are right mix of leading and lagging indicators leading kpis are used to predict changes or trends as well as forward looking and help them help to manage the performance of your fleet lagging indicators are used to determine how well your pro process was managed partner reviews how many of us have scheduled structured review meetings with your partners most of us are guilty of making those ad hoc calls only when a car is broken down or when you need to place a new order or terminate one continuous engagement not only with partners but with your end users is crucial you need to know financially how sound is your leasing partner and how many of your users reported for scheduled maintenance that previous quarter set up monthly virtual open houses for your users to share with feedbacks share quick quarterly snapshots with your cfo's function heads hr and procurement partners moving on next if i could start all over again what would i do differently given a choice i would create specific policies for countries regions and while use the global framework it's easier to cascade one policy but we lose the relevance which when we generalize it curate some specific trainings for fleet managers work with steven and his team to have the best practice sharing sessions for new fleet managers and ha and have that safety net i spoke about earlier i personally struggled with multiple excel sheets and its ac accuracy so i would factor a cost of a decent dig digital platform to manage my fleet and have it as a single source of truth right from sourcing to maintenance to retiring of the fleet modules it should be there what initiatives should be taken and the list can be endless but i choose my top 5 here defensive driving 
human, human and human. Let's not forget who our audience is. We need constant nudging and inculcate safe driving in our culture. Defensive driving trainings before allocating the vehicles and have refresher trainings every alternate year. Or if the churn is high, maybe every year. Sustainable freight. How can we reduce our carbon footprint? What can we do to optimize fuel efficiencies? Do we have the ecosystem to introduce EVs and hybrid cars? I'll leave you with that thought to ponder. Next is telematics. Implement smarter telematics and not a GPS doc data log logger who throws random numbers end of the month for you to analyze who drove at what speed, but technology that gives you real time visual feedback for safe driving alerts the drivers for harsh braking, harsh cornering, harsh acceleration and so on. Have you considered about smart routing or geofencing? Give your drivers the choice of smart routing. Let them punch the locations they want to cover and apps generates the most efficient route. This prevents, prevents long driving hours and saves fuel. Command center. If your fleet is huge, you probably need a command center to monitor your movement live. This comes handy if your fleet is involved in critical goods movement or employee transportation. And like I said, there could be plenty, but choose your top five and implement what suits you. Moving on, the future. What does the future look like? I wish I had a crystal ball to answer that. But nevertheless, I am more than confident with such wonderful fleet managers, APAC will be the leader and other regions will look upon us simply because we are diverse in everything we do. I personally would like to see greener fleet. Support network for fleet managers, peer group forums, trainings, certifications and so on. Predictive maintenance is one of the. Keys where we could do more. Last but not the least, single digital platform that connects the OEM, the leasing companies, fleet managers, end users and fleet managers. Thank you one and all for this opportunity and I wish each one of you a great success in all your careers ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Nashiket Anaveka from Tata Technologies for sharing your expertise with us.